Hello and welcome to another edition of Only in Illinois, your weekly video recap from Reboot Illinois. I'm Madeline Dubeck here with Matt Dietrich. And this week we want to try to sort through the convoluted battle over arrays, mm -hmm. per diems, and mileage reimbursements for lawmakers. Right. And the theme of the day is optics. <laughs> exactly. So take us through, because originally Governor Rauner vetoed yeah. these raises, which are an automatic cost of living adjustment. Right. Uh, so lawmakers make as a base pay almost sixty-eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars each, and then most of them make an additional ten to thirteen thousand right. stipend for committee chairmanships mm -hmm. and leadership positions and so forth. Rauner vetoed it. Right. And then what happened? Well, Rauner, Rauner uh, used his amendatory veto power to take out the line about the cost of living adjustment that was supposed to go into effect this year based on a, an earlier law, uh, and, but the, the General Assembly never took action on his amendatory veto, so the whole thing went away, so, which meant that they, so were they were in line to get a 2% cost of living adjustment. And uh, two weeks ago, House Speaker Madigan was asked about this in a press conference and got a little bit snippy with a reporter. Let's take a look at that. Well, explain that pay raise issue because they are still promoting that as a problem. Well, they promote a lot of things, but I, I've spoken to the question. I don't plan to speak to it any further. But there is a pay raise that lawmakers are getting? I said, I don't plan to speak to it any further. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was two weeks ago. Right. Uh, then this sort of built up, and Governor Rauner really used it quite effectively as a stick to beat the Democrats with. And uh, also, you know, he likes to really emphasize that uh, Speaker Madigan's longevity. Um, it, one of his themes is that he's protecting the political class, and Rauner was very effective in saying that now Mike Madigan and the political class have ensured that their 2% raise will go into effect despite my effort to, to veto it. It's a little curious. Uh, now, one of the thing, one of uh, Madigan's defenses to this has been, well, we sent you a budget, Mr. Governor, and in that budget was a bill that would have done away with this COLA, but you vetoed the whole thing. That's why it went into effect. But I never really saw that as, as a very good argument. That's kind of, kind of complicated to, for people to understand. And I, I think this is one of the areas where the administration really kind of won the PR battle. Well, clearly, because then this week the House voted right. 101 to 101, 2 or something like 101 that. 101 to 1. But even when they're unanimous, they're not fully in agreement. Here, here are a couple of Republicans uh, giving, uh, giving their support and uh, thanking the Speaker for, for calling it for a vote. Mr. Speaker, to the bill. I strongly support this legislation. It is absolutely outrageous that we could be in a position that members of the General Assembly are getting a pay increase while social service agencies don't know how they're going to be funded. People are talking about raising taxes. What we should be doing is we should be in session around the clock to adopt a budget so that we could do our job. This is a good first step. I so I'm glad, late, it, late coming nonetheless, I'm glad the Democrats in charge of this House of this General Assembly and the legislature now see the propriety of not taking a self-serving raise amid a budget controversy, a budget crisis. Welcome. Thank you for that. Um, I'll, I'll remind some folks also that since 2010, COLA increases were verboten. It was only last year in the throes of a partisan budget was it embedded on a partisan roll call. In fact, some members of this assembly didn't even know they got a pay raise that they voted on. That happened this week. So now the 2% raise is gone. Speaker Madigan well, then... No, because the Senate still has to vote. Well, that, that's true. The Senate, it still has to go through the Senate. Now, right. uh, President Cullerton has said he will call it for a vote. Even he's, though it's unconstitutional. And, and he says it's not constitutional. He's probably right. Well, it's, it's blatantly unconstitutional. But you can go ahead and pass the bill anyway. So nobody's going to sue? Hmm? I don't think anyone's going to sue. Really? You don't think there's a lawmaker who is so safe and secure that they might go ahead and do that? Ah, uh, it's always a possibility, you I suppose. We'll see. <laughs> 
So, but in the meantime, Governor Rauner actually won this battle, as you say, and the optics of it, yeah, uh, and the political points from it, and put the public pressure on Madigan mm -hmm. and the House Democrats so that they felt they needed to do this. Right. Does that mean that the pressure is also building on them for a budget agreement? It's hard to tell because this was a very simple thing. And like I said, it was so easy for the administration to just use this as a club and just hammer. And easy the, for people to understand right. and wrap their brains around. And, you know, I mean, and how, how hard is it to, to, to not be frustrated knowing that you have social service agencies right. across the state who are laying staff off because there's no budget, and then meanwhile the lawmakers who haven't gotten the budget passed are having their salaries automatically go up. No, it's not going to make a big deal to the bottom line of the state, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, but I think from in terms of people who are frustrated with just the general function of government without dividing it up into parties and factions and things, people who are frustrated with the operation of government, this was a you know, pretty big, pretty significant win for the, for the governor. All right. Well, we'll see if it has any lasting effects mm -hmm. and see what the Senate does next week. That's it for this week's edition of Only in Illinois. Thanks for tuning in and read more about it at RebootIllinois.com. Thank you.